meal and conversation. All are invited to the table to hear the message of inspiration and hope from small business owners across the country as we celebrate diversity in culture and cuisine. Welcome to Food Coma, Conversations Over Meals in America, hosted by Cynthia McAllister. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Food Coma, Conversations Over Meals in America. And I'm your host, Cynthia McAllister. I'm here with a special guest, Sandy Nagel. I am so excited about her business. Okay, so before we get into that, we're first going to talk about the food. Now, Sandy, you brought in a wonderful dish, and this is something that's like tradition for you, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Let's talk about the name of the dish and what it is. Well, it's called sauerkraut meatballs. If you add cabbage leaves to it, then you call it sarma. Um, it came from my grandparents. They are German. And they moved from Germany to Austria, Hungary. So hence the uh, addition of paprika and everything in it. And then they moved down to Yugoslavia when the farmlands were open and the rice got added. Because if you look in a German dish, we don't use rice. We use noodles and dumplings, but no rice. Because I couldn't figure out why. I thought it was to stretch the meat, but it was because uh, being in Yugoslavia, and they had a lot of influences from other places. So it's a one pot dish. If you gotta like sauerkraut though. If you don't like sauerkraut, don't make it. <laughs> well, I like everything. So, you know, when I tried this dish, I thought it was very flavorful and I'm gonna take another bite. Mm. I made it too. <laughs> I really enjoy it. And like I said, if you put dumplings on top, you now have, you have your vegetable with your sauerkraut, you have your meat, and you have carbs. So, you know, it's a one pot dish. We normally make it in the winter time, but I can eat it year round. Yes. Well, I thought it was fantastic and I love the tradition that you brought to it. So thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure you probably made some of this as you were growing up. Was that something you did in your house all the time? Oh my God! Well, yeah, and we used uh, with the cabbage leaves. We used my grandpa's cabbage cabbages from his garden. Oh. So, and my grandmother made her own sauerkraut. So, wow. everything was made. That makes it special. Everything is from the garden or from the hands. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, tell us more about your business. Your business is nonprofit guru. Now, tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. Well, everybody. Nonprofit guru. What exactly is that? You're a guru. Well, I have been working in and with nonprofits since 1995. And over the years, I've picked up on things when people come and talk to me about wanting to start a nonprofit, or they come and they explain to me they're having problems or whatever. And I found that there was a similarity in every person who said they had a problem with a nonprofit. And it seemed to be on the business side of it. Everybody knows if they have a, a love of something, if it's a love of teaching kids to read or if it's a love of helping animals. But first thing you know, it's who do I talk to to get a website? I don't know how to fill out this IRS form. I don't understand all of this. And it was always these same questions over and over and over. And working in nonprofits, and I always worked in the administrative side, that's what I dealt with every day. So I knew the answer. So people came to me and I got to thinking, well, you know, I'm just giving these answers away and I'm only helping this one person. I would love to be able to help a lot of people and help them to with their dream of having this lovely nonprofit and being successful and being able to focus on their mission rather than worrying about whether they filled out their IRS forms at the end of the year or did I, how's the website doing? Who's How's the website doing? Any kind of legal aspects to it? Oh, I don't know how to do, um, how do, where do I get funds? How do I set my board of directors up? What are bylaws? Why do I have to have them? That came up all the time, and that's what I did. So I figured I might as well take these skills that I have and be able to, to start something, but I never thought it was the right time to start the business single mom, didn't have time to do this, trying to do that. And then when my daughter went off to college and I sat down with a friend, she says, you have no excuses now. 
<laughs> You've been doing this for how long? And you need to make it official. So I did. I went ahead and I made it official and I came up with a, a logo and the whole nine yards and a business plan and whatnot. And that's how the nonprofit guru started because I want to help nonprofit um, administrators to fulfill their dreams and to be able to focus on the cause that they're so much in love with. Wow. And I am so excited about your business. I share it with people all the time. And you know, <laughs> I like to get the word out about what you do. So I know it was probably pretty tough being a business owner. So why did you decide to make the shift to owning your own business instead of working for someone else in that way? Well, there's so many, there's not a lot of what I do out there. And those that are, they do piecework. And I didn't want to do piecework. I w wanted to do it my way because I feel like some of these other consultants that are out there, they help them with one thing and then they move on. And a lot of them, they don't even know where to start. And my biggest, my biggest thing is they need to have a foundation when they start their nonprofits. Most of them just go in and they just run in and they go, you know, I want a grant and I want to do this and I want to do that. And I wanted to be able to kind of get them at the start and set them on the right path. And then if they need me, I can come back again and fill in and help them when they're starting to do grants, or I can fill in and help them when they're starting to do um, events, or they need help with marketing in a different way, or as their um, nonprofit grows, we can be flexible. Because in the nonprofit world, if you're not flexible, you're gone because there's a lot of other nonprofits out there. And I wanted to make sure that all the people that I worked with had the tools to be successful. And I didn't think I could do that working for someone else. That's fantastic. All right, well, we're gonna take a quick break and we have so much more with Sandy Nagel after this. with more of Food Coma, Conversations Over Meals in America. And I'm here with Sandy Nagel, and we're looking at her business. So let's hear more. So, Sandy, let's hear a testimony. How have you overcome challenges as a business owner? Whew. Well, trying to balance when you first start a new company. Obviously, uh, you need to have other money coming in to pay the bills. So I am blessed to work as an administrator in an inner city church where I'm already using all these skills and I can actually um, work in the afternoons, evenings, and weekends with the nonprofit guru. And being here and even the pandemic didn't slow me down because most of my work is done virtually um, anyway. So being able to do things virtually, still having another job that doesn't conflict, which is very unheard of. Uh, but being able to do that has been a blessing. And as I'm uh, getting more clients and everything, eventually I think I might go full time. So it's it's been lovely being able to do that and having the ability to do that. Okay, well that's great. Now, Sandy, you have been a fantastic Key Spot business partner, and we're so happy to have you in our network. How has Key Spot supported you in your business? Wow. Wow. Uh, I was turned on to you by one of my business partners, Michael Barnes. I met with you guys and I thought, okay, how are you going to help me? I help nonprofits. I'm not in the for-profit world, but I have received so many referrals from um, your talks that you have on once a month and following up and several of them have become clients. And in fact, I have a call with another one next week. So you have been very instrumental in providing me with referrals that I would not have had had I not signed up with Keyspot. Key 
<laughs> that's so wonderful to hear. You know, and that's the thing. I mean, you are in business to make money and we're happy to help you get what you are looking for along with support and a whole network along the way. And so. I've met some great people on those Thursday night talks, just wonderful people. And in fact, a couple of them are here in Cincinnati and I'm going to attend one of those open houses. And that's all, that's what it's all about, connecting people. Because that's what we say with uh, KeySpot, we connect communities and we support small businesses. Now, I'd like to ask you, who are two role models that you have in business? Who are people that you look up to? Wow. Well, one is Gwen Finnegan. She was my mentor uh, starting back in the year 2000. Uh, I came from a grants background at UC working in medical research. And I moved into working in churches and working in religious nonprofits. And next door is a food pantry. And they were looking to write a grant for an extension on their building. And I got to talking to Gwen and she walked over to the lady next door and said, do you realize the lady next door handled a $7.5 million grant and you wanna pay somebody to come in and do that when you've got somebody right next door who can be doing it for you. And because of her connecting me with the food pantry, uh, not only did I get to write that grant, and we did receive the grant, $100,000, um, but they also allowed me to attend a training session through the Grantsmanship Center, which made me a certified grant writer. And that was 40 hours of training. So she is one of my mentors who always is there and says, you can do it. And she stood behind me and she and she's also one of those that says, don't allow people to take advantage of you because sometimes people do. And she says, you are worth something. What you know is worth something. And um, you need to and she says, I know you will go above and beyond because you always do. She says, but just make sure that, you know, people don't take advantage of you and call you at the last minute and expect you to do things. And then they kind of expect that and it kind of cheapens what you do. So she's my first one. She always pats me on the back and says that everything's, everything's not everything's okay, but we'll figure it out, blah, 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 blah. And just keeps, keeps me kind of grounded. Um, the next one is Fran Tucker. I met Fran back in 2004 and she was a development director at a nonprofit. And we just started talking and she's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's nice to talk to somebody who understands nonprofits because most people don't. And uh, we just developed a friendship that way. And we were always able to talk to each other and call each other with a question or whatever. And we've referred people to each other. And we just kind of, if, if I have a really strange question, I can ask her. If she has a really strange, strange question, she can ask me. So it's one of those kinds of relationships. And when you're in the nonprofit world, sometimes we feel that the for-profit world doesn't quite understand what we do or value um, what we do. Yeah. Well, I love that you have people who are near to you that you say are your role models. These are people who have a special place and who have helped you along the way. So that's really important. Yes. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take another quick break and then we'll be back with more of Sandy. Once again, we're back with more Food Coma, Conversations Over Meals in America. And I'm your host, Cynthia McAllister. I'm here with Sandy Nagel. Now, Sandy, you are not only a guru when it comes to nonprofits, but you also support nonprofit organizations. Can you share a little bit more of some of the work that you do? Uh, yes, my first client was called Ellie's Rainy Day Fund out of Beaver Creek, Ohio. And what they do is they help families um, who have animals that need very expensive surgeries and their family can't afford it. And if not, probably these animals would no longer be with us. And they've helped a lot of them for elderly people or children who have disabilities and use these animals as emotional support animals. 
So it's kind of near and dear to me because I am a dog fanatic. And when I was introduced to her, she was doing everything herself. And um, she just called me up in the middle of the night one time. She says, I am so glad I found you because now I can sleep. And she has really grown her organization. And she's brought in some wonderful volunteers. Now I set up a volunteer program for her. Um, I helped her with her website. Um, the biggest thing for her was, was helping her to find people to help her because she was like a one woman show. And it, as we all know, we can't all do it alone. And I felt so bad for her because she does such wonderful work. And she started it because of her dog, Ellie, who um, was the spokesperson who has a condition and she was able to afford all the expensive uh, medical treatments, unlike other people. And just this past Friday, after nine years, she had to put Ellie down. So it's been a very, a very sad moment. But she says, you know what, Ellie lives on in all the work that I do. And I thank everyone who's been by my side. And I have been wor working with her for a long time. So it's very um, near and dear to my heart, the work that she does, because I know that, you know, veterinarian bills are expensive and they become part of your family and she has really reached out to a lot of people and i am so blessed that i've been able to put her in the situation where she is now um her first year with her first year when she was with me at the end of the year we did an annual report and her um her volunteer support went up 57 percent. wonderful now let's talk a little bit about your future where, okay. Where do you see your business in the future? Well, to be honest, the pandemic didn't really hurt my business because I can now talk to people all over the world. But what I'm seeing, and I recently brought on a partner because what we're seeing now is that colleges are allowing their students to start nonprofits. And no offense, they give them here you go. We're going to give you a space. We're going to give you this. Go. And these kids have a passion about something. And they're very good with technology. They're very good with technology. But when it comes to the business side and building credibility, they know nothing. And I taught a class at UC through their, um, their OLLI classes for people over 50. And um, got to talking to this lovely woman there and she says, my daughter's trying to start this nonprofit, her school set her up. And then they just kind of said, here you go. We'll give you all this stuff. Here's all this money. Go. No support. And she says, I, I, I can do some of it. I can't help her. So I'm seeing with my new clients that a majority of them are all college kids wanting to start a nonprofit and God love them. There, there's a lot of work that needs to be done out there. And if I can help these young people, this is a future thing. I mean, my daughter's even talked about working in a music uh, nonprofit organization because she's a singer. And um, she's, gosh, I think I, I can learn how to write grants, can't I? And I'm like, yeah, I think I can help you with that a little bit, you know. But yeah, I see the future as me working more with um, college age students and Ohio State has been sending and this lady has been sending me all these kids from Ohio State. So I'm now working with one called C3D, which uh, makes three dimensional models for people who have visual impairments. And the other one is just now starting, they're going to be doing education on the importance of eye exams and eye and, and preventive eye care. And because um, people usually don't go to the eye doctor until they're, you know, their eyes are bothering them now. They don't realize that they should be doing it, you know, every year. So this is another set of, of students that are um, starting a nonprofit and they're all med students, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, they, they understand the medical stuff. And when I start talking about, you know, budgets and everything, I see the eyes glaze over and whatnot. And I'm like, hey, all the more reason. I can help you and, and and you know what they want to listen and they want to learn they're actually better than somebody who's been doing it for a while and says you know I, I don't need you to tell me anything these kids 
are like sponges. They really want to learn. And in fact, one of them, uh, C3D, one of my clients, they recently um, partnered with a restaurant and actually designed a Braille menu. Wow, that's fantastic. And uh, this guy liked what they were doing so much, he is now donating $3,000 annually to them. That's impressive. Congratulations. It is. And, and, and it all came from doing an hour and a half um, presentation on building credibility <laughs> and asking them questions. And the fact that they were standing there, sitting there taking notes, I was like, wow, you know, they're actually taking notes. And then they, they, they emailed me and asked me questions afterwards. And I'm like, there's nothing better for me as a, as a, a consultant when somebody says, hey, I got a question, I liked what you said, blah, 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 blah. Because some of them, you know, they listened to you and went, okay, fine. And it just didn't happen. And that's okay. That's okay. I have no problem with that. I will give them my knowledge and what I think they should do and explain why we need to do it. And um, But ultimately, it's up to them to implement it because it is their nonprofit. Right, that's true. All right, so one other question for you. What words of wisdom do you have for business owners or those who are going into business for themselves? Um, start slow, have a written business plan, uh, talk with a banker, get friendly with your local banker. I know, I know, but get fr friendly with the local banker. Um, don't pick board members because they're your friends. Uh, pick a board member that you know well that you look up to and that can provide something to your organization. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't try to do everything yourself. Um, take time to be creative. And I know that sounds weird, but some of my weirdest ideas have come that way. Um, for an example, I take an hour a week where I just kind of surf the internet and look for ideas and what and I had a I had a I had a client that was doing um, distributing diapers and they wanted a grant and you know, everybody goes to Procter and Gamble everybody goes to all these I said you got to think outside the box I'm an outside the box thinker I dress my kid up as a fish in a bowl I've done all kinds of things so I I, I don't fly by <laughs> the standards and. All of a sudden, I came across Vlasic Pickles. Now, what does Vlasic Pickles have to do with diapers? The stork, the baby, the stork. I thought, well, there's a stork. Okay, let's approach them and see if they would, you know. And uh, so we approached their organization. They thought we were weird, first of all, for contacting them. And you know what? They gave them $5,000. Wow. that's. Um, yeah, they said, you just took, I said, well, think about it. He, you've got the stork standing there all the time, you know, and everything. I said, the stork delivers the baby. He's got the little thing there. And I said, and you're doing baby stuff. And I, and I said, this just shows a different aspect. And they decided it was so out of the box, you know, to do something like that. We did a, a dog fashion show. You know, I mean, just thinking something out of the box because everybody attends all of these fundraisers and does all the stuff. And sometimes don't we get a little bit bored about going to the same fundraiser where you stand around and you look at a, you look at a raffle items and you eat. You know, it's it's kind of boring. Let's do something a little, you know, outside the box. And um, one of my clients, we had a volleyball tournament. I did volleyball with veterans, volleyball with veterans, VV, volleyball with veterans. So, I mean, just coming up with, you know, and when people call me up, they're like, how do you do this? I, was, I don't know. I, but you have to have that time spend in allowing the creative side of you come out. And, and I don't, I don't do crafts real well, so I have to do something else. So this is my, this is my thing of helping people. You have to have that time for creativity and a time of rest that's you such can... great advice both of those creativity and getting the, that rest that's so key now my final question for you Sandy is mm -hmm. you shared how Keyspot has supported your business now why would you recommend Keyspot for others in business well 
when you're first starting out in a business, you guys are affordable. And you go and touch many different areas of the country geographically. You can't. You have the ability to do that. So I am getting in touch with people whom I would not myself have uh, been able to, didn't even know that existed. And what was interesting is even some of the people who have for-profit businesses, one of your people, one of the for-profit businesses on there said, my friend's starting a nonprofit. So I would never have had the opportunity to even talk to that person. So you bring me in with people that I would never talk to. And you have so many different opportunities. I mean, the networking alone, and now you're putting opportunities for events out there that we can attend and all of these other wonderful, wonderful things. Um, I mean, it's the bang for the buck. You know, it's it's the bang for the buck, and you are involved, and you are passionate about what you do, and you're real. So I, I think that what kind is what kind of brought me into it as well. Well, thank you so much, Sandy. I love what you were sharing about your business. I love the passion that you have for helping nonprofits. And again, I'm so thankful to have you as a key spot business partner and to continue to support you and share your business. So thank you for being a fantastic guest on Food Coma Conversations Over Meals in America. Your dish was delicious. So we'll have that at the end of the show. And everyone, thank you again for watching Food Coma Conversations Over Meals in America. And I'm your host, Cynthia McAllister. See you next time.